This is a precision tree tutorial, which is an Excel add-on, which allows you to build a decision tree into an Excel file. We will use the Boss Control Investment example that's described on the next slide. The starting point will be to lay out the input data, and the more experience you have with Excel, the better, because it's important to understand the concepts of copy and paste and how to write formulas. When we input data, like probability, and we have something happening or something not happening, it's important to write the probability and its complement as one minus the other value. This is important because it allows you to do sensitivity analysis on the probability. Similarly, a value that's used in several parts of a tree should be consistently referenced to enable sensitivity analysis of that value. Then we'll show you how to create a decision tree. We'll name a cell to facilitate copy and paste subtree, and then we'll show you how to calculate net revenue. In the automation investment example for Boss Control, the company is delivering an option for a vehicle that they will be selling for $60 to the automotive companies. They have two choices. They can go with a low investment in equipment that will cost them $8 million, but then the variable cost for each option that they produce will be $27, or they can go with a high investment amount of $13 with more automation, and the variable cost then will be only $14 per part. The take rate is a concept that refers to what percentage of people, when they buy a specific car, request this specific option. In this example, we assume two numbers represent what we believe are the ranges of possibilities. It's possible that only 30% of the people will take this option, or it could be as high as 50%. And we treated this for the purposes of this example as a dichotomy. Namely, there's a 0.4 probability that the take rate will be 30% and a 0.6 probability that the take rate will be 50%. This option is going to be offered on 1 million cars. So when we calculate the net sales revenue, it's the price, $60 minus the variable cost, times the percent take rate, times 10 to the 6, which is the 1 million vehicles. These values would change depending upon the strategy selected and also the take rate. This is what the basic structure of the tree will look like when we create it in Excel using Precision Tree. The first box all the way to the left is the word automation investment. Then we're going to have a decision in green box, and then that decision has two alternative branches, low or high investment. And then connected to each decision is a random event, the take rate. And with the random event take rate, there's a 50% take rate or a 30% take rate for each one of these. Notice how we laid out the information. We labeled this worksheet boss controls, and we put the information for investment strategy low and high, and fixed costs and variable costs all in a simple table. We have another column, column E, that has the price at $60. It also has the cars in millions, which is one. And then we have a separate section that describes the take rate, the percent, 30% or 50%, and the probability 0.4 and 0.6. In this example, the 0.6 is not written typed in directly, but rather written as 1 minus the cell H4. H4 is where the probability of a take rate of 30%, and H5 has 1 minus that value. To use Precision Tree, you should first click on Precision Tree software, and as it opens, it will open Excel with Precision Tree in the top menu bar. When you click on the item Precision Tree, you'll see this menu. And in the upper left-hand corner is the decision tree to begin creating your tree. To do that, however, you need to keep your cursor in a place where you want the tree to begin being built. In our case, we're starting in the cell E9. As you can see in the white line, it says E9 as a cell for where we're starting to build the tree. So click OK. When you click OK, it will start by creating a box. The default name is New Tree. When we see this menu, we list the model information and we overrode the name new tree and wrote in boss controls. To begin building the decision tree, we're going to start with a decision. We click on that blue triangle. When you click on that triangle, this is the window that opens up. We're going to want to place a decision in that where the triangle was, so we select decision. The default name for this decision is the word decision. We're going to rename it. We overwrote the name decision, the default name, and typed in investment level, since that's the decision we're going to make. Next, we select the branches tab. The default assumption is that there are just two branches. One's labeled branch number one, the other one's labeled branch number two. We're going to select each one of them and rename them high investment and low investment. In this view of the menu, we've renamed the two branches high and low, and now we want to input the values. 
the values associated with these branches are the investment level, the fixed cost. So we set for the high, we set it equal minus C4, that's the fixed cost for high, and for low we set it equal minus B4, which is the fixed cost investment for the low investment. This is the tree that appears after you've named the branches. And you hit OK. Notice there's a minus 13 on the high branch and a minus 8 on the low branch. Since this is an optimization problem, the better number is minus 8 at this stage of the game. In the next few seconds, we'll show you how we're taking the cell H4, which has the probability of a 30% take rate, and we're going to assign a name to the cell H4. To name a cell, you're going to go to the upper left-hand corner in the box which said H4, and we're going to type in prob underscore 30 as a name for that cell. Next, we went to select the next cell. Notice the way cell H5 is. It says equals 1 minus H4, as we've mentioned in the past. These two are complements of one another. Next, we select the box, and we're going to rename that cell. Instead of H just H5, we're going to give it a name prob underscore 50. The next step is to attach an uncertain event namely the take rate, and we're going to place it at the end of the tree, so we click on the blue triangle and get ready to add a random event, a chance node. After clicking on the blue triangle, this is the menu that appears, and we're going to select chance node. The default name of this node is chance. We're going to override it and type in take rate. Once again, we select the branches tab to allow for different alternative outcomes of this chance event. Now we're going to rename the branches. The default, again, was branch number one, branch number two. And we're going to rename them 50% and 30%. The default is two branches. If we have to have more than two branches, notice in the upper right-hand side there's a button that says Add. That would be used if we were going to have three or more branches. But we don't need that now. The default assumption is that the two probabilities are equal. We're going to want to type in or specify what the probability of the 50% outcome is and we're going to refer to that cell. Recall that we had named the probability of a 50% take rate as prob underscore 50. We're going to type into that cell equal prob underscore 50. And then we're going to move on to the second row and deal with branch number two. We then worked on the second branch. We named it 30%, and we set the probability equal to prob underscore 30. Now the values, which we'll eventually put on each of the branches, the net revenue. We're not going to type it in here. We're going to do that actually into the spreadsheet itself. We want to copy this random event, this chance node with its branches, and attach it also to the low investment. The probabilities are going to be the same. The names of the branches are going to be the same, so we're going to want to copy and paste. So we need to first right-click on the circle. This is the menu that appears, and we're going to select Copy Subtree. Now we move down to the second half, the bottom half of the tree and we right click on that blue triangle. Now we select paste subtree as we're going to copy the first random event to this point. The software asks you if that's what you really want to do and the point is that sometimes when you copy something you may be deleting something somewhere else so they ask you. In this case just click the yes button. This is what the tree looks like but we haven't yet input a formula. Notice the probabilities on each of the random events are the identical. This was possible because we had named these cells. If we had not bothered naming the cells and simply typed in H4 and H5, when we copied and pasted, we would have ended up with 0% in each of those slides. But that has to do with understanding how copy and paste works in an Excel spreadsheet. Now we're going to rename the price because that's going to help us write the formula. We're going to rename the cell that has the price in it. 